The new Dragonfly UI is here. Domino's is dead. Rest in peace. I love that add-on for literally all of Warcraft from Burning Crusade on. And now we have to go with Bartender because the default UI has too many bugs and it does not do some of the things I need it to do, like disappearing when I need it to do. Lots of things that I want to be able to customize that the default UI just didn't cut it for me. And I am now going with Bartender. And I dove deep into Bartender to dive into all the aspects to make it very simple so you can set up your UI in seconds or really dive into it and customize it completely. This is the default UI that you can set with, up with Bartender within seconds of launching it. It's pretty much default. Or if you want to be more modern, it can look like this. This only took me seconds to do, and it's a much more modern UI with a setup in the center, no bars on the side, everything still looks nice and clean. Or you can do my UI. Ooh, look at that. It's very, very clean. And if you didn't notice, there's a bar that's right here that only shows up whenever I am in combat. It pops up whenever I'm in combat. When I'm not in combat, it goes away. Lots of really cool customization options. Let's get into it. So we're back to the default UI now. I'm going to walk you through it step by step, and you can do this along with me. So open it up in your browser, have WoW open, mess up with some things here, and you can customize it exactly how you want. I'm going to show you all the settings to get it to look how you want, and including the settings I use for myself here at the end. So first, you're going to type slash BT, which is bartender after you downloaded it of course and this is your interface it's always intimidating at first uh, Domino's was more efficient as far as user friendliness but D bartender after diving all the way into it can do all the same stuff except for one tiny thing that I'll talk about at the end so first up as usual we're going to go to profiles you got to go to profiles first create a profile I heavily recommend to do this I have a tanking profile I have a healer profile etc and you can change them up and then whenever you update little tweaks all of your characters with that profile get updated so I am on the default here right now just to show you exactly what the default looks like and we are going to create a new one so we'll do we'll type in YouTube so when I say okay it's going to keep my defaults and if I want to copy it I can copy it from default I can copy my new one I can copy anything I have from a setting if I'm in a certain spot and want to make little tweaks you can do all that stuff from here so we're going to mess with the default UI now let's go to the action bars but first the, at the very top up here this mini map icon is gonna let the bartender show up on your mini map there's the little mini map right there. there's the little Stein keg uh, of beer looking situation. So there's that button lock. Whenever I have the button lock on here, I can actually move these things. And if I turn the button lock on, I cannot move these things. So I'm turning this button lock off right now because I want to be able to move stuff around, especially when I'm messing key binds and moving uh, buttons around. Lock is going to be where it turns it into edit mode or not edit mode, all the green stuff. I'm going to turn this on for right now so the screen's not all green and, and crazy looking. So let's go ahead and use this uh, into the first little setting here. Use vi vehicle UI, keep that up. So when you don't want to mess with the vehicle UI, it's always going to be something that's going to just cause a bunch of cast if not. Uh, and I, I keep all of these here. Self cast modifier alt, sure, why not? I don't use the focus cast modifier. If you do turn this on, then if you hold control, it's going to cast the button you're pressing at your focus if you have one. So there's that. Out of range indicators is really interesting. So this is a, a target dummy right here. And you see these two abilities right here are red. Only the key binding of the buttons are red. But this is really cool. You can change it to full button and it makes every ability that's, that's out of range red until I get into range and then there they go. Now they're... Now they're uh, lit, lit up again. I really like that feature. If I already show my action bars and didn't use weak auras, I 100% would use that. I love that feature. I did not seen that feature before. I really do like that. For this mouse over casting thing, this is a new thing that's coming to the UI with like certain buttons. You can hold a button and then now it's a mouse over. I don't like that. I have macros. I already did a whole video on macros and mouse over macros. I feel great about macros. You can too with that video. It's a little long, but hey, you got it. I'm gonna take that as none and not mess with that at all. So now that is the general settings. I'm before I get into all these bar things, Things, I'm gonna go down here and, and clean this up a little bit. So blizzard art bar I'm gonna go down here to the UI bars. I'm going to turn off that blizzard art bar I'm sorry. I just never liked that have that in there I'm gonna turn it off. There you go for the status tracking bar my character's max level So you can't see this So I'm gonna unlock the bars now and at the very very bottom You can see the status tracking bar if I enable it or disable it is what it's your experience bar your reputation bar for myself I always take this bar and I put it underneath where my camera is I just put it right there in the bottom left corner of my screen You can see it sticking out there at the bottom just a little bit but if I don't want it to stick out and I want to shrink it down, I can lower the scale down and now it's good. And the scale is just going to shrink the entire thing up and down. Or I could have switched the width. I could keep the scale at one and change the width down and just make it smaller and accomplish the same thing. Awesome, great. But the the size of what the numbers say, so if, you, if it's hard to see, you might want to scale it up and then shrink the width down. That's kind of a, a little balance you got to do there. Experience bar is out of the way now. Uh, quest bar. Q status bar is huge. With the new UI, if you've never used it before, whenever you enter 
in a group, it's like down here in the corner and there's this little eye that pops up instead of it being on your map. I really don't like where it's at. So I 100% want to move this Q status thing. I'm going to put mine right here. But if you don't have like a, this camera display, I like I mean, it's around my group chat. It's I like the spot where it's in right here. That's that's where I'm putting mine. And it's going to be this little that green eye that shows up for your group finder stuff. So there's a simple one there. Vehicle bar is going to be I'm going to put the vehicle bar down here with my uh, regular bars for whenever I am in a vehicle and that whole thing pops up and micro menu. Oh my gosh, the default UI cannot change or move this micro menu. I hate that. I don't like that it's in the corner. I always put mine right here. So now in this little spot, I like to put mine here, but I like to organize them a little bit more vertically. So whenever you click on this, uh, you can change the rows of how many rows it has. I like this look right here and I'm going to put this so you can see it right there. And now I have all my menu interface stuff right here and I'm going to do the same thing with my bag bar. I'm going to grab the bag bar, which actually it's, it's weirdly bugged right now where it's, it's not grabbing it, but it still it still works. So I'm gonna go right here and I have the bag bar now. All right, I don't know if y'all noticed, but the bag bar down at the bottom, it was offset. The, the icon and where it was at it was off center. It just looked a little weird and it kept glitching out. So I just backed out of everything, slash reload space UI, enter, and everything's back to good now. So anyway, for these bags uh, icons, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the bag bar. I like to have it be like this. You can have one bag and it also shows regions, looks like that, and I can move it wherever I want. And I can also have the uh, the growth. I can have it grow to the left and have the bag here and this there. I can also have this go up. I can also move it around to have the bag be down here and then I can change this back to right. I could also, if I wanted to for this case, I wanna stack them down here. So I'm gonna have it be two rows and I'm gonna change the vertical growth to up and now it looks like this and I can put it right there. I like the look of that. So now I'm just gonna lock it and show you guys what's up is this is kind of what it looks like now. I have my, my interface over here. If you like that look, you can you do the same thing. Uh, and I'm about to move my bars over here and I can change it to where I hide these and you actually can't see them anymore. So if I go to the micro menu, this is all the different things you can mess with, the alpha, the padding, the different rows and stuff that we've all been been messing with right now. If I go to visibility, there's all of these options. These are a bunch of fade options that are going to be huge for setting up the UI that I use at the end. I'm going to click fade and it's going to fade out and you can see right now it's super faded, but whenever I mouse over, you see how it blinks on. Amazing. And that's what the default UI does not have. You can set the fade to be like, you know, something like super soft, like 10%, 25%. I'm going to put it at zero. I know where they're at. It's right next to my chat box and it says the fade out delay. I'm going to put it at about half a second. And now whenever I curse, whenever I move my cursor over it, it appears. And when I take it off, it disappears, appears, disappears. And there's a little bit of a delay and you can change the delay here and you can change uh, what the fading amount is here. That is how I set up a very clean UI for all of the buttons. And I, I know my buttons. I know which buttons do things. I know my keybinds, and I have whole videos for keybinds. That's a whole, I love keybinds. Uh, but I don't need to see them actively. Anything I do need to see, I make weak words for. So I put fades on all of my action bars, but we'll get to that. And there's a lot of different fade options. You can always hide them to where they're just absolutely gone if you never want to see them ever. Uh, you can, and again, this is the fade only affects this mouse over fade situation. So I'm gonna turn the fade off. I could always hide them and they're absolutely gone always. I can hide them only uh, whenever I have a vehicle, hide them when I'm possessing, hide in combat. That's huge. I love things that hide in combat. We'll get to that too. Hide out of combat. Another one that's absolutely huge. That's the bar that I showed you at the beginning that hides whenever I'm out of combat. So right now it would be hidden and whenever I enter combat, it shows up. There's also some conditionals here, which I used to mess with with dominoes, but I don't have to anymore because it's all taken care of. Anything that I need is all right here. So I'm going to have this fade set that up too. I'm going to match the bar the same way, the bag bar here. I'm going to go to visibility. I'm going to set the fade up to be nothing. And it's just going to give it like a half second fade. And then now I'm I have my bags and uh, things not cluttering up my screen. It only pops up whenever I go over there and I know where they're at. And you can also increase the size of these things too, but I'll get to show, get to that in my, my UI. There is the default UI bars of anything else that's going on besides your action bars. Now, for your action bars, we're gonna talk about the pet bar. So let's go ahead and turn everything on. I'm gonna unlock everything so you can see all the green. So I'm gonna take care of this, uh, the pet bar first right here. Pet bar, I usually have uh, my pet bar over here off to the side because I usually have my pet bar here, my, if I do have a pet, it's there, and then my party members are all right here. So I keep this over here, cool. Now for the extra action bars, this big thing right here. For the extra action bar, I usually put put that a little higher. Most of my weak aura stuff comes up in this area. So if I do have an extra action bar, it pops up right there. I also uh, hide the artwork from it because sometimes it has a bunch of really fancy artwork that gets a little cluttered. So you can hide the artwork. And even if, if you have the artwork, you might be able to put it down even somewhere like this. I'm just gonna keep it up here for right now. You can mess with the scale, mess with how much it's faded. Again, all the same visibility stuff as before. Now for the bars, honestly, 
honestly, these class bars right here, I didn't have anything on these class bars. If you played the game for a, a while ago, or if you maybe have something like warriors and druids and stuff, this might be a little bit more relevant to you, but you they're ultimately not needed. I turn, I have all of my class bars turned off and this bonus action bar also turned off. I focus mainly on the bars one through eight. Now for bar one. Bar one is the lead bar in this whole thing. And it's where it's anytime you get new abilities, they add them per manually onto this bar that you have here. So it is kind of important. And it's the one you might want to start off with. I myself personally, uh, because of the default Blizzard UI, you can't mess with this. I, I put mine here, shrink it down. You'll see what I do with that here in a minute. But for the sake of this default, I am going to put it right there in a, in a normal spot where some normal people would have their stuff in. So I'm going to relock everything again, just so you can really see what's going on with these changes are. But this is bar one compared to bar two. Editor will probably bring this up. Thanks for that, Will. And then we'll see what this is going on. So alpha is going to change the fade type situation. I don't know why you would want to fade your own action bars. I mean, unless you just want to constantly keep them fade like that to just subtly see them you could do that scale is going to increase the actual like how big they are that's a huge scale there you can also manually type in the numbers padding and affects how thick and wide these things are I like to put my padding at zero so they're all nice and close to each other and oop, negative one zero so the buttons as 12 is how many buttons there are you can change this to have as many or as little as you want all the way and again the default blizzard UI only lets you go down to six I think that's dumb anyway zoom watch what the zoom does boom it puts those buttons to look like a lot of people that you've seen streaming and everything like that. I do stream here on YouTube as well. Check me out. Um, but it's going to be nice, big, clean buttons. I love the look of this. I would, that's the way I'm going to have this set up. And then button grid, you see how there's these grids around here. I'm going to click off button grid and it does not show any empty buttons. This makes it to where you don't see these little empty gap buttons and they are actually just gone. I like the way that looks better. And then rows, you can actually change it. Let me put, turn these back on so you can see what this is looking like. You can change how many rows it has. In fact, now I will unlock everything to bring this up into the front and center here so you can see it right here and you can mess with how many rows it has so this is one row two rows three rows four rows all the way up to now a vertical bar and this is what these bars over here on the right hand side that's what they're set up in like right now so i'm going to move this back to one and bring this back to the center spot right here and then also the bar is snapping you can see the bar snapping is turned on right here so i have the bar in a nice little spot right in this dead center looks good i'm going to bring it up i'm going to raise it up a little higher okay back to it let's lock these again and keep messing with this bar down here I'm going to turn the button that buttons off. These growth directions are the same thing that we've met that messed with from before of which direction is growing whenever it's you're adding abilities to it. I would just leave that alone. Don't mess with that. Hide macro text and hide hotkey changes to what if you have keybinds on this, like you see here, I'm going to go to action bar two. And if I hide the hotkeys, you can see how the hotkeys are turning on and off on these buttons if I hide them or not. I personally like to leave these on. It helps, you know, with especially if you're learning a new class or you're leveling a character and you got to help remember your new keybinds. If you're changing keybinds around a lot for Dragonflight, it does help if you can actually see them so I like to keep that on let's go back to action bar one click through makes to where you actually can't click these anymore at all and this becomes like almost like a embedded into your UI type of thing I in general don't like having click through uh, things I use weak ores if I want to do something like that so I have that turned off back to visibility now we have the same fade options so uh, I, I leave these alone if you want to have a default bar and everything you can hide them whenever the vehicle like use these two to hide them whenever you have a vehicle UI sure cool um, and then state configuration for your first bar is important for bar one. Uh, this is going to be any sort of mouse over casting, auto assist casting, bar paging. If you get possessed, you can actually have it, which is, this is better than dominoes. Whenever you get possessed, you can have this bar become the bar that you uh, are in control of. So that's kind of a nice thing, actually. So that's the possess bar. And then paging has to do whenever you're in druid forms or stances and something where you shift and then the bars change dynamically. Really, druid's the best example of that. Uh, that's the only thing you're going to have to be uh, messing around with pages. Again, I leave it as default. You're going to be able to do it. Set up your druid shift and you'll see where the bars change. The modifier based switching, I don't know why you would, you could could totally do this you could have it set up to where when you press control bar one turns into something else right you can set it up to where you can have it turn into a class bar a normal bar a whatever right so if you have if you want to change the paging paging just means the bar changes and sw switches entirely to something else you can have one bar and if you hold down shift that bar changes to something else and that's another way that you could do your bindings again I just use macros and the positioning tab is kind of redundant and you can move things around and you can set them manually here the scale the scale here here is the exact same as the scale here. I don't know why they double dip that whole thing, but there you go. And anchor, I just I just leave the anchor alone and you can move them wherever you want with the unlock feature to just move them around anywhere you want. Another thing with moving it around is you see this bar two right here. What if, if I wanted to set it right here, but it keeps snapping on accident, I don't want it to st stop snapping. Hold down shift and it removes the, sh the snapping. 
the snapping. No longer snaps and you can put it exactly where you want, but if you let go of shift, it now starts to snap again back into place. Almost done here with this default setup. I'm gonna go to bar three, I'm gonna turn on bar three. So now bar three is here in the center and I got my kind of my look going here. I'm gonna do the same thing. If you want it to all look the same, go to bar two. I'm gonna turn on the zoom. I'm gonna change the padding to zero and now that looks a lot more similar. And I'm gonna snap it right there and now that's matched up and I go to bar three. I can do the same thing, zoom, padding zero, and then snap it on next to everybody else. Probably does mean I need to move the vehicle bar to right here, and now we're good with the vehicle bar. And now I kind of have that modern setup that I showed y'all in the very beginning. Uh, but these bars over here, if y'all want to mess with these, bar five and four are off to the side over here. So bar four is this vertical situation. It's because it has 12 rows. One, two, three, four, five, all the way to 12 rows. You can change this to a horizontal bar just by sliding the amount of rows it has. You're going to make it look cool like this and have another bar over here if you want to have some sort, sort of bar. I'll show you what I do with that here in my UI in, in a minute. I'll show you what I do with this and with my UI over here in a minute. But if you don't need it, you can entirely disable the bar, go to bar five, disable that bar, bar six, seven, and eight are all disabled, but they're all the same and you can move them around however you want. So now it's time to show you what I use for my personal UI. So I'm gonna go to profiles, I'm gonna go to dungeon coach uh, 6.0, and here we go. If you see there's a little bit of stuff going on, there's some fancy stuff here. This bar is the bar that I have set up. Let's go to bar one. Bar one's visibility settings are hide out of combat. So if I am out of combat, which is right now in the city, it's gonna be hidden. So if I lock everything, you see that bar is gone and everything's gone actually, that's interesting. If I unlock it now, bar six I have set up for bar six is my, my mount. Whenever I am out of combat, you can mount. And with my default UI, I use shadowed unit frames is my health bar right here. It's very small. The little icon that shows if you're in or out of combat is very, very tiny. So, so this mount shows me if I am out of combat because I have the settings on bar six. The visibility settings are hide in combat. So let's, let's lock these and show you what I'm talking about here. So right now, I am not in combat. So this bar is hidden and this bar is showing because it's not hidden yet, right? Now, whenever I enter into combat right here, this is going to go away because it's my mount and it disappears whenever I'm in combat. So if you have any type of bar or buffs or whatever you want to have, a potion, not potions, um, uh, consumables of any kind, maybe you want to have a bar for that. I do have that down here. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but whenever I enter combat, this is going to go away and this is going to show up. And there we go. My weak cores activate. These are weak cores. That's a whole separate video. Um, but now my mount is now gone. I can't I can't mount anymore. And it's fine because I actually literally can't mount. But if I'm running away, seeing whenever combat drops, I don't know when combat drops. And then now combat drops and I can now mount again and there it is and now I'm good to go, right? Cool little setup. Now back to slash BT and we have unlock everything again. So that's what these two bars are all about. Vehicle bars right here. My cast bar is quartz. I put my cast bar right here. That's a quartz add on. Uh, vehicle bar, there's that. Now these bars, uh, bars one, two, three, four, five are all the same and here's what I, here's my settings for them. I have the zoom turned on, the padding's at zero, all that kind of stuff. You, you can see all the settings right there. The state configuration for every single bar is off. The positioning is defined. Visibility. All the visibility is fade on at 0% in a one duration, uh, one duration. What that looks like now, if I lock it, all of my action bars down here, if I hold my cursor over them, I can see them only if I hold my cursor over them. This is the one thing that I did like about Domino's that I don't like about Bartender is if you were to click them together and if bars snapped onto other bars, like if I had action bar two, three, four, five, I could snap them together as one brick and it would move together. I did love that. And if you had them snapped together, it would inherit the properties of the original right so if I snap it onto bar two everything would have the same properties as bar two I really love that so that whenever I held my cursor all of these would show up instead of just this little rose so that's a little not ideal but again I, I like to have these here so that I can move this around and change my bindings if I want and I can uh, that's a little nice uh, thing for me down here uh, but if I am leveling or learning new key bindings I do turn those on by default so that I do always see them it does look a little cluttered uh, so I don't like that but at least I can see what my ad my bindings are and to do that, all I would have to do is go to bar, bar setting two's visibility, turn the fade off, go to bar three's visibility, and I would just turn the fade off at each of these. And then now, whenever I'm actually playing or leveling or working on new bindings, I can have these up here. So sometimes if you see me streaming and I'm, I'm playing on an alt or something or a new character I'm learning, I like to have these here because these are all my bindings and they're set up exactly how my keyboard is. This is A, L, a through G, one through five, Z through A, all that kind of stuff, right? And mouse buttons are over here, all of that. It's very nice for me to be able to look and see that. Now, there was another thing if you notice over here, this is my action bar seven. So action bar six is right here. Action bar seven is my consumables, my hearthstones and visibility potion. It's a big, huge one I put down here off in the corner. 
So if I unlock things again, you see bar seven. If I go to bar seven, I have it set as a row. I have it rows of three, so one, two, three rows. This is a nice big square right there. I scaled, I scaled it to where it's actually pretty big compared to the other ones. And I changed the visibility to where it's fade. And I put a delay of one second so I know where it's at. I can click around whatever I need to eat and stuff because Opie, the add-on Opie is not working right now. As soon as it is working, you'll see a video from me posted on that. So there's that. My pet bar is right here, very, very tiny. My Q status is right here, like I just like I said, and my bag bar and micro menu are all right here in a nice in a spot and they have the same fade settings so if I hold my cursor over I can go and find them right here but I do have a lot of those key bound and I can just press my key binds and open them like that and if you want to completely replace the blizzard UI the only other thing you're missing is shadowed unit frames I do have a full video on shadowed unit frames but just to unlock the shadowed unit frames for a second so you can see where everything's at this is where my party frames add on this is where my pet is this is why I have the pet action bar over here because my pets right here if I do have one my party's right here my health bar is right here I love as a tank having my health bar in the center beneath my character because it's an important part of what I need to visually look at. I have my target and my target's buffs all right here. I do use the Blizzard default UI for the uh, buffs and debuffs up here. That's pretty much it. Target, target of target, focus, raid frames, all that kind of stuff is all shadowed unit frames. Lock that and we're back to normal. And threat plates is what I use for this. I have a, a video for that. And these are weak wars, which I am going to fix up right now in a live stream if you want to check that out. And I will have a video posted shortly on weak wars. So I hope this helps you with your game and gets your UI into a spot that feels good because man, I was feeling real cringy with the whole Dragonflight UI uh, situation and now I'm diving into Bartender for my own sanity and I hope I've helped you out in the process too. Stay creative, think outside the box, peace.